Patrice Bergeron powered through his injury and the Boston Bruins withstood the loss of Brandon Carlo during last night's win over the New York Rangers, completing a back-to-back -back sweep in New York over the Islanders and those blue shirts. Let's talk about that and also preview Sunday's game against the San Jose Sharks on today's episode of Locked On Boston Bruins. Your Locked On Bruins, your daily podcast on the Boston Bruins, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, Bruins fans, and welcome back to another post-win episode of the Locked On Boston Bruins podcast. I'm your host, Ian McLaren, and this is a daily show where we discuss all things spoke to be. Today is Friday, January 20th, and I want to thank you so much for making Locked On Bruins part of your day, free and available on all podcast platforms, as well as on YouTube, where we recently crossed the 1,000 subscriber mark. Thank you so much to all those who have jumped aboard there. Please do so if you have not already. And I'll be organizing the draw for this beautiful Tim Hortons Patrice Bergeron mini stick that I promised to give away once we hit that mark. If you're on Twitter, you can find the podcast at Locked NHL Bruins. And you can find me, my dad jokes, and hockey tweets at Ian C. McLaren. All right, let's talk about last night's game where Patrice Bergeron decided to tough it out after taking a puck to the face the previous night and played the whole game against the New York Rangers. I talked about how important it was for him to come back in that win over the Islanders and secure that win. And Bergeron, after monitoring the swelling in his nose and cheek overnight, decided to give it a go against the New York Rangers and made an impact in this game, uh, drawing an assist on the game winning goal. Bergeron said um, it was mostly making sure that everything was fine, depending on the swelling, how he was feeling. He was hoping that it was going to stay manageable and it did. And there were no, issues for him out on the ice as he played his dominant usual game. Now he did actually score the game winning goal, I should say, uh, from Brad Marchand and Craig Smith 442 into the second period after Pavel Zaka had opened the scoring very early in the first to stay red hot since uh, signing his contract extension. Connor Clifton added a beauty out of the box from Brad Marchand early in the third to give the Bruins some insurance, which they needed late in the game as the Rangers foiled Jeremy Swayman's shutout bid. It would have been his second shutout in a row. Uh, ben Harper scoring his first goal in like four years to break that shutout and the Bruins who were playing down a man on the blue line had to withstand a late Rangers attack and uh, that they did for the win. Um, now there was some concern about, you know, maybe just lightning Bergeron's workload. The Bruins of course have amassed this amazing record over the first half of the season, we could get some load management going on down the stretch. A back-to-back, -back, after taking a puck to the face, would have been a prime opportunity for this um, kind of situation. But Bergeron said he was ready. It was up to him, and he felt good enough to play. And Bergeron has earned the right to be part of that decision-making process, Montgomery said. It's a consideration later in the year when they're going back-to-backs. Heading into the playoffs, you want everybody as fresh as possible. 
but um, he was in, got the game-winning goal, and it's what we expect from the captain at this point. Jeremy Swayman, like I mentioned, was just 423 away from his second consecutive shutout. He did get the win, however, and he's now 6-0-2 over his last eight games after the 31 save performance, the longest, second longest active point streak in the league behind former Bruins goalie Dan Vladar. Bergeron said he's been terrific, poised, seeing every shot, always in position. He had that rough game on New Year's Eve against the Sabres. A lot of people were saying, send him down, bring somebody else up. No, he has been fantastic. Made some grade A saves, including one off Alex Lafreniere, another off Chris Kreider, a breakaway from Artemi Panarin. And uh, he's now 11, 3, and 3. The 227 goals against average, a 916 save percentage, which is pretty impressive considering he started off a bit bumpy had that injury, and yeah, there's been some poor starts in there. But he has that inner drive, that unflappability that we've talked about, and they are indeed the best duo in the NHL right now between Swayman and Linus Ulmark. I mentioned Connor Clifton. He scored a goal after taking an unfortunate puck over the glass penalty. Stepped out of the penalty box, found himself on a two-on-one with Brad Marchand. Did not look out of place as a defenseman on that two-on rush. Ripping a wrister over the glove of Igor Shesterkin. Looked more like Connor Klifternak out there than uh, anything else. And again, that's part of Montgomery's system is to get defenseman more active offensively of course it helps that he was placed in a position where he's coming right out of the box nice turnover at the blue line by brad marchand to set that up overall though the bruins defense has six goals in their last six games uh, which is a great sign you want to have your defenseman chipping in offensively making things happen and um it's nice to see Connor Clifton get rewarded there. So that's pretty much the story from last night's game. The Bruins have now won six straight road games, boasting a nine game road point streak. And, uh, you know, talked a lot about how good they've been at home this season. They're 15, four on one away from TD garden. And uh, that's pretty huge, you know, to be that good on the road. Usually there's a bit of a narrow gap between home and road success, but Boston equally, well, not equally, but almost as good on the road as they've been at home this season. Coming up after the break, we're going to discuss the Brandon Carlo injury, as well as David Pasternak's inclusion on the Atlantic Division all-star roster. This episode today is brought to you by Built Bar. If you're like me, like many people, you came into 2023 saying you were going to eat a bit healthier this year. If you want to maintain a delicious snack while also feeling good about yourself, you got to try Built Bars. They're the perfect balance between healthy and tasty. They're covered in 100% real chocolate, And they come in some unbelievable flavors like churro, peanut butter brownie, coconut almond. Not sure how they do it, but they taste like a candy bar while maintaining healthy macros. 130 calories, 4 grams of sugar, 17 grams of protein. And you don't need to wait around to get a box. We've been talking about how you can order them online from Built.com, get them sent right to your door. Now you can head to your nearest Walmart, hit the pharmacy section, Grab a box of four, or if you want some more, go to Sam's Club. Grab a 13-bar box with our hit flavors of brownie, batter, and churro. Thank me later after picking up your next box. 
of Built Bars. It wasn't all roses for the Bruins last night as Brandon Carlo left the game in the second period after blocking a shot, did not return with what the team called a lower body injury. We've seen this before just a few weeks ago with Jake DeBrusque blocking a shot in the Winter Classic. He suffered a fractured fibula, will be out for a few more weeks yet. So they're going to be careful with Brandon Carlo, uh, do all the right tests, see what the injury is, try not to rush him back. They've got a good extra defenseman in Jacobs Borrell, Montgomery said. And if Carlo's not ready to go on Sunday, which seems likely, they've got the luxury of getting Zborrell into games. Uh, they're going to see what the prognosis is, get their doctors on him, and see uh, yeah, what needs to be done next. Zborrell ready to step in. Of course, you have Mike Riley down in Providence, Anton Strawman as well. It kind of uh, puts the focus on the need for some depth on the right side behind Clifton and McAvoy. Uh, Carlo this season, very solid, 41 games played, one goal, seven assists, plus 23. Uh, he's chipped in a shorthanded point as well. So if Zboro needs to come in, he should be able to carry some of the load. Uh, he's played the right side in the past and, uh, yeah, it'll be good to get him into some game action instead of just sitting around some better news though. After the game, it was announced that David Pasternak has been selected to the 2023 NHL 2023 NHL all-star game. He was one of 12 players who were selected through a fan vote which allowed fans to vote for their favorite players online and on Twitter. It's a third career all-star selection for Pasternak. He made his first appearance back in 2019, another appearance in 2020 where he was named the NHL all-star game MVP. It's obviously well-deserved for Pasternak through 44 games. He's got 35 goals, 28 assists for 63 points. Leads the Bruins in goals, assists, points, points per game, even strength goals, even strength points, power play goals, power play points. And he's averaging about 20 minutes of ice time per game, the most of any Bruins forward. So you can see how valuable he's been to this first place team so far uh, this season. It's his, uh, he's in the midst of his sixth, 30-goal season ties him from fourth in Bruins history with Cam Neely, Peter McNabb, and Patrice Bergeron. And uh, he is on track to challenge for his second Richard Trophy, uh, trailing Connor McDavid in goals at this point. Joining him in the Atlantic Division through the All-Star vote will be Austin Matthews, Andre Vasilevsky, from the Metro, Artemi Panarin, Adam Fox, Ilya Sorokin were voted in. Miko Rantanen, Nathan McKinnon, Connor Hellebuck over in the Central. And then Leon Dreisaitl, trade target Bo Horvat, and Stuart Skinner somehow squeaking in uh, in the Pacific Division. The All-Star weekend is set for uh, the first weekend in February. And uh be nice to see David Posternak signing a contract extension between now and then as well. The Bruins play February 1st against the Toronto Maple Leafs. They'll be off for the All-Star break and then off that hold next week on a bye week, resuming play on the 11th of September, or <laughs> September, February, uh, after their bye week. Their next game is scheduled for Sunday against the San Jose Sharks. And we're going to preview that one coming up 
after the break. All right, the Boston Bruins will be back in action next on Sunday, taking on a San Jose Sharks team that uh, will be playing the previous night in uh, Columbus. So the Bruins will be getting the Sharks on the back end of a back-to-back and after having today and tomorrow off. The Sharks, not uh, the best team in the NHL. In fact, far from it. They are... 3-4-3 Three, four, and three over their last ten, and like I said, they will have that game against Columbus in between now and the Bruins game, which should be a win. Uh, Columbus blowing a three nothing lead to the Anaheim Ducks last night, which you know the Ducks are even worse than the Sharks, so that's not great. The Bruins and Sharks played, of course, earlier this month, a four two decision by the Bruins over the Sharks in San Jose. You always have to keep an eye on Eric Carlson. He's their best player, eight points over their last five games, including uh, six assists. Timo Meyer, another attractive trade possibility on the market this year. He's got three goals over their last five games in net. Duties split between James Reimer, Capo Kaganen, both with sub 900 save percentages. So it should be a winnable game for the Boston Bruins, Brandon Carlo or not. Um, I think that's pretty much it for today's episode of Locked On Boston Bruins. A big win for the black and gold last night. Patrice Bergeron. With that warrior mentality, again, nobody would have held it against him if he decided to um, sit that one out. Bruins, again, perfect on the penalty kill, holding the um, Rangers to just the one goal scored by defenseman Ben Harper, probably the unlikeliest of goal scorers in uh in the rangers uniform the bruins did go 0 for 4 on the power play themselves and um you know that's something that they will continue to uh work at as they move through the season david Krejci had a great game two assists brad martian with a couple assists and the team leader in shots was Charlie McAvoy with four, tied with Brad Marchand and Patrice Bergeron. All right, that's it, friends. I hope you have had a great week. We will talk to you again on Monday to discuss the San Jose Sharks game, take a look at the week ahead, and uh, please do have a great weekend. Take care of yourselves, take care of each other, and thank you again for all the support here on the Locked On Boston Bruins podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your favorite team every single day.